Hello! Let's wait for some people to start joining. Okay, hello and welcome. My name is Isabel Kent uh, and I am delighted uh, to be interviewing today Christy Lee Rogers. She is a photographer and artist extraordinaire and I'm interviewing her for the Colnaghi Foundation. This is the third in our series of interviews with artists and creatives whose work explores the old masters in a new light and as relevant for our modern day. Now, Christy is an American photographer and artist who's best known for her pioneering use of water and pools uh, in her photography. Her work has been displayed all over the world, from China to her home in the United States and in Europe and Paris and London, all over. And recently, she has also been displayed more publicly in, on billboards and in an outdoor exhibition in London. Is that this is paused? Okay, I think the live has re This is pausing due to low connection. Okay, well, I'll keep going. Um, so Christie's art plays with themes of strength and vulnerability, loss and beauty. Her photographs use water as a medium, creating these ethereal and otherworldly images that are full of colour and um, full of these billowing fabrics. They have often been compared to Baroque paintings, in particular by the likes of Caravaggio, and I certainly think with her multifigural uh, paintings with a lot of movement, they really remind me of Rubens. So, without further ado, I'm going to see if we can get Christy to join us. Let's see. Hi. 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 I'm so glad this could work across the oceans. Hi. How are you doing? I have to adjust this a little bit, but hi hello, everybody. Hi. It's a good day. Hi. <laughs> we've got a wave um yeah how are you doing i'm doing good yeah it's it's a beautiful day here i'm in nashville and uh, yeah just creating away and i'm i'm so happy to be with here you know yeah. here on on instagram with you so thank you yeah and it yeah. looks like your surround is, is this your art that surrounds you is that behind yeah you actually on the wall? one of them in the back and then my son and i paint together so we painted that one over there Oh, so, amazing. That's so nice. How old is your son? Mix. He's six. Oh, wow. Okay. That's yeah. a pretty large canvas for a six-year-old. You're starting yeah. him on, on some paint. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, we've got some huge ones in his room. So, Wow. Okay. Impressive. I think I was just yeah. doing little notebooks when I started. Oh. Um, okay. <laughs> I want to I, I want to go talk about your early art, your early inspirations. Your works are just so amazing. But first, I want to ask you about sort of creating in the time of COVID. You're obviously in the US. A lot of it's locked down. And, and how have you been finding that? Well, it's interesting. When it first started, I mean, I was just kind of creating way. I had some projects that got canceled or postponed. So I was pretty devastated about that. But then I just sort of went into full production mode and the first thing I did actually was release a print for two children's charities. It was weird. I just oh, felt wow. this kind of burning, uh, I don't know. It was just this, this feeling like, okay, I'm not going to let children suffer during this time. So I went into crazy production mode. Um, we donated about $28,000 so far. Wow. Okay. These two kids charities, Save the Children and No Kid Hungry. And, and, you know, it's funny because just being caused over the situation made me feel a lot better that I could, okay, I'm going to do something here. And then I went into yeah. full on production mode. Um, I had, I had already been shooting this collection and I had sort of had it on the side. And then I just started to look at all the images and, and dove into it. So I've been really busy. I actually was with the, that print that we were selling, um, you know, I basically was by myself at home because I couldn't have anybody over. So I did all the production myself. So printing, wow. I mean, I, I sent out to printers and we had a really hard time delivering the prints because I couldn't get my printers. They were shutting down. We couldn't yeah. get the mail to go. So it was, it was stressful, but we, I somehow got it through and we were selling all over the world, you know? So, um, yeah, 
you know, but it's so fantastic to, to turn it to, you know, ha have a, have a good cause in there and, you know, try and try and be productive in this time in a way that is giving back in a way that's trying to raise money. You know, so many people have been doing that. It's really fantastic that you're, that you've been doing. Yeah. That. Yeah. I think that that's sort of, um, the only answer for me, yeah. you know, otherwise I'm just kind of sitting in this darkness. So I said, no, I'm just going to do something about it and, and then just create. So I've been, Yes. You know, it's funny. I was listening also to the Gladiator soundtrack. All oh, right, yeah, from Hans Iconic. Hans Zimmer. <laughs> and I mean, it's really intense. You know, so I'm listening yeah. to the soundtrack. I'm creating these images, and, and I'm actually just now releasing the collection. It's it's it's. I'm releasing it slower. I'm releasing it differently because usually we have yeah. an exhibition. But this so time, this is, we... this is your collection, Human. Just for those people who are who are yes. listening who might not know, this is your brand new collection. And yes. yeah, if you could tell me a little bit about the, the ideas behind that, how that came about. Well, I mean, I, I think I was feeling like everybody else, sort of this darkness yes. and this, you know, what's happening to humanity, what's going to happen. And so I kind of dove into it with the collection. And I, you know, I always choose to see the light and see the hope. Yeah. So yeah, of course, there's darkness, but it's almost like you need both sides. So it's, I almost felt like this collection was like, yes, we need to dive into the darkness to learn something and then come out even stronger. So mm. again, that's all of my collections are about our vulnerability as human beings on this planet. Um, I mean, we're vulnerable to everything, you know, yeah. and, and uh, somehow uh, we find hope and beauty, you know, somehow yeah. we keep going and that's, that's really inspiring to me. So yeah. I always use that as the backbone. And that is really ingrained in this collection very strongly. Yeah. Um, and then there's also some really light, playful images that are just almost like these fantasy worlds. And that's me saying, well, I, that's where I want to live. I'm yeah. there. I'm not going to be in this. I want to be there. Mm. So... Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it does come across so strongly when you see the images that you're making right now. The the fact that your images can be so beautiful while also seeming so sort of strong and seem, seeming to have this this darker edge, you know, this cutting edge. And I've seen that, you know, I've been obviously looking back throughout uh, a lot of your, your career and your oeuvre um, for, in preparation for this interview. And it always has that, you know, it's not just about the beauty on the surface. There are these stunning uh, images full of color and movement and all of these sorts of things, but there's always that undertone of um, of maybe violence in some images, of you know decay in other images. It's really it's really powerful that they keep that your images keep giving. It's not just the surface, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, beauty is is great. I I love beauty, but that I feel like. Um, there's something more to us, you know, like there's a lot of imperfections in my images and yeah. I celebrate the imperfections. I love that the faces are not perfect and the bodies are not perfect. And, and that's, you know, that's us, that's who we are. So I think that's kind of what you're seeing because we have both sides, you know, we have our dark days too and, yeah. and our light days. And, and of course we don't want to show anybody our dark days, you know, oh no, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I feel like these images are just able to show both sides and be okay with it, but know that the beauty always shines through in the end, mm -hmm. you know? And it's always there to come back to that beauty, however exactly. you know, things get, so yeah. Yes. I, I know we're going to come back to some of the points you raised just there, because there is, you know, so much to talk about with every, all of your answers. But I do just want to go back to your sort of early interest in art, your early access to art. Can, can you tell me a little bit about that? When did you first get drawn into, into creating? And yes. Well, I mean, I was born in Hawaii, so there was yeah. not a lot of uh, art culture around me when I was growing up. But luckily, in high school, I had a photography class and I, my first boyfriend gave me an old 35 millimeter camera to play around with. So and he had a dark room in his bathroom. And so I really started getting obsessed with photography and mm. I was really, uh, I was into poetry. I was writing poetry mm. a lot when maybe I was 13. Um, that was sort of my first love. And then also performance art. Um, so I was sort of doing these things, but I really didn't have a place to, you know, to present it and and then and then I also had a filmmaking class in high school and it was really rare in Hawaii to have a filmmaking class or a photography class but those two classes saved me 
And I would lock myself away in the dark room and you know, none of my other courses interested me, but all of a sudden I was interested. Mm. And that's when I kind of knew. Um, but you know, it's funny because for a long time I sort of dabbled in it and I, I played around, but it wasn't cr quite there, you know? And it wasn't mm. until I found the water as an element where I, I really got obsessed, you know, and you just yeah. know when you get obsessed with something that that's your <laughs> thing, you know? And I would be working during the day and shooting at night, every single night and just obsessed, just, you know, anybody yeah. I could find throwing them in the pool, my mom, <laughs> <and> dad. <laughs> this was still in mom. Hawaii or? This, this is in like, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah wow. this is in Hawaii. And then I, I did, um, you know, move to Los Angeles and, you know, I, I mean, I definitely went to museums and I was involved, but I, I, you know, I didn't have that same culture growing up in Europe or yeah. in London where you have access to art. So, so yeah. um, it came a little bit. Mm, yeah. Sorry. I, I was going to say this is something I wanted to ask because, you know, your art is constantly being compared to Caravaggio and to other Baroque works of art and you know it reminds me of Rubens and also of those amazing mm. ceiling frescoes you see in in Europe but from the sound of it that's that's a, a, a aesthetic that you came to naturally and I wondered you know was there any subconscious sort of influence of those things when you were when you were sort of building your aesthetic eye or, or is it just all natural is it kind of a coincidence I mean, that, that's a good question that I get asked a lot because, yeah. I, I mean, I didn't actually leave Hawaii until I was 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. um, and yes, I feel like art, this art is just a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I didn't really realize it until people started to compare it to other art. And then I'd look at yeah. it and say, oh, yeah, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but it, it's who I am. I feel like there's something deep inside of me that I'm expressing I, and I'm not just expressing a visual there's a communication or a message that I want to express and it really is connected to that baroque feeling of like yeah. something greater than ourselves something bigger this drama and passion mm -hmm. emotion and I feel like this is the only way I can express it and it's funny because I just happen to be a night owl, so I don't like the morning. I'm just, I work at night. And so I naturally. I'm sorry for getting you up in the morning. And I think no, it's 11 a.m. where you are. And it's 5 p.m. where I am. So thank you it's so much. It's sad. It's sad. It's 11 a.m. <laughs> but no, I will, I work at night. So I naturally had to light everything. And um, so, of course, I, and it's funny because I started out just using, you know, lights that were very cheap lights that are these mm. harsh lights you know and then that became my style with the siren collection was my first collection and that was all mm. nudes and it was one color and it was it was about space and time you know and mm. how this one you know you could put a diamond in a store window by itself and it would just have this right. power or you could put a hundred of them and it would yeah. lose its power so it was about this there was a space elements uh, around the cropping and the black, you know, was yeah. very important to the image. So, um, so yeah, one of my first friends, actually, Parker Stevenson, who's an actor, and um, he, um, he brought me this book, he saw my work in a show in LA, brought me this book and signed it saying, keep going. And it was a Caravaggio yeah. book. Okay. And I, I went, Okay, you know, and, and he was one of the first people that said, oh, Caravaggio. And I, I mean, it's interesting yeah. because you want to be your own artist. You don't want to be compared sometimes, but somehow, you know, it's, I mean, it's beautiful because I, yeah. I love that that art is coming back now. Yeah. 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 And I think that the fact that you're using this visual language, which during the Baroque period, and, you know, I should say I'm coming at this from an art historical perspective. That's yeah. what I do. So the Baroque period was all about kind of communicating ideas, you know, it was about trying to create a sense of the ethereal, otherworldly, sort of heavenly realm, if you like, for certain images. And of course, I mean, there's a diversity, different images were trying to do different things, but it was also about the theatrical. You know, when you think of the Baroque, it's very theatrical. And yes. so, you know, you don't necessarily need to be specifically quoting that because that visual language existed you know, before the Baroque in, in, right, kind of, right, in right. theatre with candlelight and you saw it uh, around the place and it, and it exists today and it's a language that 
is clearly connected to what people respond to you know it's clearly connected you know it's something there's something stronger than just oh it's from this historical period that i'm now recycling that's that's not what you're doing and so i think it's quite beautiful that you're sort of subconsciously or, or that your art harks back to this without actually meaning to because it shows this more overarching sort of artistic language thank you thank you know. yeah it, it's i mean it's it feels it feels right and that's what i go with everything is just a feeling for me so yeah 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 no amazing <laughs> and thank you so i want to go on just to for people who don't know you work in collections and you don't actually create for a photographer we think of photographers as creating uh, a lot more sort of output than you know than a painter might do than you know taking yeah. takes a lot of time and i wondered if you could talk about your process about these collections and about the length of time that it takes to create your art and the really sort of sort of studious process that you have yeah i definitely create the collections more like a painter would so i will do i keep my notebooks throughout the year and then i'll do a a, a couple shoots and then, you know, maybe maybe two or three shoots to do the full collection. And then I will be working on the images, cropping them, looking at them. I mean, looking at them yes. is a whole process. I mean, I could take months just selecting images mm -hmm. and feeling them because they, ha they have to be really strong. Then I will print them, put them on the wall and live with them for a really long time. Mm -hmm. so, so I might put out 20 to 30 images a year. And that's sort of been my production. Uh, and I try to come out with a new collection each year. Although last year, you know, the Muses collection kind of just went crazy. And so that I didn't get to create as much as I wanted to. But then this year, you know, so far, I feel like we might have nine images. So I'm really okay. um, particular about the images that, that like they have to stand the test of time. They have to be something that I look at and I love forever and I never get bored of it. And I never, I like, I'm always finding something new in it. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, I'm not mass producing the images. I can't. I, I just, yeah. I, are you ever just, surprised when you have them on your wall? I'm sure there are images that immediately strike you as being the powerful images, but are you sometimes surprised by what images sort of linger in the background and then come forward as being these ones that you keep going back to? I don't know. I just wondered if yes. you had have... Yes, no, it's funny because sometimes I'll say, well, how come I didn't see that one? You know, where was yeah. that one hiding? And I might come back a year later and find a new image that I, but you know, it's funny. Usually I see them right away. Like you said, right. I mean, they just call to, to me and I was like, boom, boom, boom. I know mm -hmm. the top images and then the rest of them sort of come through, you know, um, but yeah. Of course, there's always, you see things differently each, and that's what's so funny, each day I'll look at them differently. And so I, you know, I might be excited one day and then I look at the next day and say, oh no, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I have to make sure that my, whatever my moods are, that there's some kind of consistency, like, okay, this image yeah. speaks to me. So... Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you're because you were talking, we were talking over the phone beforehand about how you know your process has had to slightly change now that you're getting these sort of commissions. I mean, you were recently worked with Apple, and how did you find that going more from sort of an art artist purely creating and then putting something out of your own accord to being kind of commissioned in that way? It was really hard, yeah. <laughs> really hard. I mean, it was beautiful, and I got to do whatever I wanted. So the the, the concept was all mine, which was yeah. amazing, and choosing the costumes and. Um, but having that schedule, I'm I'm really a very organic creator. So I'd like to just sort of wake up and feel it. And if I don't feel it, mm -hmm. you know, then I don't push myself. Um, and so, yeah, having the schedule and, and then also with the post-production, you know, of having the images done at a certain time, you know, that was really, really rough on me. I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah, it's a completely different thing. And so I had to really look at that and say, okay, wow, I need to make sure I communicate to... what my process is, you know, because yeah. I think people think that photographers just can just boom, boom, boom. And in the water you know, the images yeah. are crazy. I mean, you might look at part of it and not see the other part of it for yeah. a month. <laughs> you know, just so deep. There's just, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did find that, you know, 
sort of familiarizing myself with your work and just thinking, oh, I didn't realize there was a limb there, <laughs> you know? I didn't right, know right. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that's how the body was formed and because yeah. there's so much swirling cloth going on and fabrics and then you've got the refraction of the water, all these different elements that it feels like, you know, you're always seeing different, different shapes in that. So right, yeah, right. I can see yeah, why I mean, it takes you quite a long time. It does. And I have a piece in my living room and I swear each time I look at it, I say, okay, wait, I didn't see that. You know, and I, I'm already finding problems going, well, wait a second. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah. it's changing. Yeah. Well, you're always, you know, everyone's always their own worst critic, but I'm sure, you know, it's a wonderful thing to, to, to keep coming back and keep seeing more. And yes. actually something that I was wondering, you mentioned the Siren series and these single figures that you have it's quite sort of quite classical nudes and they yeah. they remind me a lot of dancing i was interested when you said you did performance and dancing when you were a, a child because they look they very much uh look like they're inspired by dancing and you know movement and the human body and also the nude but it's a single figure right and there's a kind of a simplicity to that and then you look at your later art and you have these multi multi-figural <laughs> compositions that are incredibly complex and that you know you keep seeing more uh, details in them and more figures. And it kind of reminds me again, I keep going back to earlier art, but the yeah. way that artists train by starting off with a single, with the, with the nude, with understanding one figure, and then it's only later in their career, once they've experimented with that one figure that they can create these large, you know, what we'd call sort of history compositions or, you know, large multi-figure compositions. And so I just wondered, you know, because that struck me, I wondered if that's how it sort of worked for you. Did you start off with the single figure and kind of experiment with that? And then it made you feel more comfortable with these sort of crazy compositions that come later? I don't know. I mean, what was I, your process there? I didn't really plan it or think about it. And, and again, I feel like that's kind of my process is I just yeah. feel it. But I, yeah, I did start it with the simplicity and that whole collection was about simplicity and sometimes simplicity is the hardest thing for people to do yeah. so being able to go back to the basics and, and and just have this one simple beautiful figure one color yeah. um and that was my really my first experimentations with the whole mm -hmm. style this exact style i mean i had i had been experimenting for maybe nine years but this was something new and um and I shot those up on Mulholland Drive. It's freezing cold, you know. Yeah. It, and again, it was really organic. So I'd tell a friend, oh, just come over and let's shoot in the pool, you know. And, and so we, and I love that. And I feel like that really helped mm -hmm. me to sort of, yeah, I was experimenting, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then and then the other images where I said, well, okay, let's, let's have two, three people, right? Next mm -hmm. collection. And then next collection, how about five? <laughs> and then yeah. Of course, I thought, well, now it's getting more difficult because we've got more bubbles and more commotion. And that, and it's like, it got more difficult and more difficult. Mm. And I just tried to, oh, how do I tame this? Like, how do I get them all to stay down for a really long time, yeah. you know? So- and, and how do you, how, I did want to ask about this, your process, because I know you don't really use Photoshop or anything like that. How, what is the actual process like when you go into a shoot and you have your camera? What how do you how do you do it with the models well i mean it's it's really about tra like we practice you know what i mean mm. so we, we might start out in the first few hours are just none of the images are really anything great so we're just yeah. we're practicing and i'm sort of teaching them i don't even tell them too much um about the process or what we're going to yeah. do i just want them to be there live mm -hmm. and, and to feel it and a lot of times they're just normal people and so yeah. they're not professional models underwater and so they're kind of experiencing the vulnerability themselves yeah. and they're they're it's like this fear at first you know but then they they work through it and we work through it together and then they start to feel really confident and then they're they when they see the images like oh wow you yeah. know and nowadays i mean i started out not doing any photoshop and actually now i i've started to sort of layer like I'm shooting mm -hmm. plates, you know? And so that's mm -hmm. kind of the new, like the newest technique for me. It's really hard actually. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not a technical person per se, but mm -hmm. I'm finding that I can create different images that way. So, so it's like mm -hmm. everything is sort of changing and progressing from siren and then we're just getting more complicated, you know? Yeah. So, and then of course video. So now my newest thing is the, the right. motion. 
and I'm actually working on some right now that I shot and it's yeah I, I'm not even gonna say what it is but <laughs> there's these motion so I imagine these images but in motion just really um, which, which feels perfect because your images yeah. your photographs already have so much movement in them and they feel like they're moving images already and so yeah. the fact you're now adding that extra dimension will yeah, be really no, exciting is, I'm sure this is super yeah. exciting to me this is kind of where it's at and I I love yeah. filmmaking so this is so perfect and yeah. and they're small so I've been working with this company and they they've been projecting the the videos on buildings and in mm. places and so i think this is the future is mm. is these visual uh, these these moving i like to call them breathing videos mm -hmm. so they're just it's like a breath you know it's just yeah. sort of moving um and it's not really a film or a whole yeah. it's it's art you know yeah and actually that brings me on to another question I wanted to ask, which is about your art in, in public spaces, because I mentioned in the introduction uh, that you've exhibited all over the world and often in galleries, but recently you've been having a lot of art on billboards and there's this public display in London right now. And I wondered sort of how you feel about that. Do you, do you sort of relish this new, uh, <laughs> this new space to exhibit your art? I do, I do, because I feel like out in the, like I can actually communicate to the public and to the people and instead of being in a gallery where you know someone's yeah. got to kind of walk in there and it's maybe a different crowd now i can just kind of be out there with the people and that's mm -hmm. i'd actually prefer being there and that was something that i mean we had started to do that and then when covid hit of course it was a great time when we said well how how are we going to launch this collection you know yeah. i mean how are we going to communicate and get this to people you know um and so yeah. You know, I also was working with a hospital in New York City and I had donated okay. some artwork to them and they were at the center of COVID. They were like, it was Cedar sinai mm -hmm. in New York City. Um, and one of the doctors was a client of mine. And then she reached out to me and don we donated a piece and now we're donating another piece. And it was this, mm -hmm. you know, just really positive. Um, mm -hmm. This one's called Riders of the Light. It's just this angelic piece you know for new york so i started to feel like i want to do things for cities you know i mm. want to uplift people in a, a different way you yeah. know because even for myself it's hard i mean i can't tell you you know you wake up one day and you go wow what's happened to the world you know so i know that everybody else needs sort of like a, a helping you know you just kind of need to help each other pick each other up right yeah and one particularly yeah, and it, it's great that your art is going into hospitals because, you know, there is this, I mean, there is this beauty to your art. So it is uplifting in that way and sort of mentally uplifting to just look at it. It's not, it's not a, a painting that you look at that makes you feel terrible about the state of the world. It's something right. that really uplifts, even if right. there's this darker element. But also, of course, you know, there's a lot of, we know that there's a lot of good that art can do. And also with water, we know that there's a lot of uh, good and medical practices that that water can help with. And so, you right, know, it kind of blends right. this in the hospital, uh, in the hospital space. So that's really nice. You know, hospitals are always such, uh, such sort of dark and, and depressing spaces. Uh, so if you I can know. kind of lift people up like that, then that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's what she was saying too, is that this was yeah. in the ER. And so when families would come in, they, you know, have some art there, which I think yeah. is a great idea. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. So I realized we've actually, so we, we've, almost gone over time. So I, I know that you have a piece of art. To, I know it's just gone by in a flash. It's gone by yes. But um, I know you have a piece of art that you've kindly got out to show us. So I wondered yes. if we could have a look at that, have a chat about that, and maybe a couple more questions. And then yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this Fantastic. is a piece that I was working on when, um, when COVID hit. And um, it's called, I called it Venus Rising. Well, let's see if you can see it here. So, um, yeah. well. so that, that's the work. Um, and yeah, this was, uh, these are some of the prints that we were, you know, donating or, or selling for the, the charities. Yeah. And, um, no, it's amazing. It's also nice to get glimpses of, you know, I can see sort of what looks like maybe costumes or things like that. And oh, the, yes. In the this background, from, you put a lot in that room. But. Yeah, this is Reckless, from my Reckless Unbound collection and then, yeah I, I do keep a lot of costumes so yeah. um and actually 
if and then of, of course there's a lot of artwork and tubes um yeah and then but, if you were to see my closets it's crazy I've got all my <laughs> fabrics so i've got just oh wow okay <laughs> like crazy in here i mean it's I'm not even going to open this all up because they'll probably fall out. But <laughs> I yeah, don't want you to have a have a accident on on live Instagram. But that yeah. that print you just showed us is so amazing, and I was looking at that image um, before, and I remember saying to you, "Oh, it looks like the Virgin Mary because white and blue are the colours yes. that the Virgin Mary often wears." And yes. I sort of one of my favourite artists is is um, a Spanish artist called Murillo. And he paints the Immaculate Conception a lot, which is an image that includes the Virgin Mary kind of rising up with angels everywhere. And uh, I, I thought that it must relate to that. But you were saying again, this was just an image that came organically. And then yeah. everyone else just sees what they like in that image, which I love. I really love that. Yeah, no, it's really funny. I, I when you told me that, because I didn't, I, I don't think I really paid attention to that image of maybe I've seen it at some point in the past, yeah. but it was not on my mind at all. It just sort of was in the background. And then when I yeah. saw the, I mean, it's a very close, I mean, yes, the really baby close. at the bottom and then the blue and the white. Um, yeah, and even the way that she's sort of chills. raising her arm. Sorry. Yes. No, it, it kind of gave me chills, you know, when yeah. I saw that. So, so yeah, it wasn't any intention to do anything like that. It would yeah. just... I actually wanted to do Venus for a really long time on the seashell because she represents... Yeah beauty and like how beauty can lift the human spirit up you know yeah. and it's like contemplating her beauty yeah and um and then I tried you know how am I going to do the seashell and so I finally was able to get this pleated fabric and and make the seashell yeah. underwater so I was I was thinking about those kind of things how do I get the seashell no you know? amazing <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's such a beautiful image, and it's so wonderful that that was one of the ones that you sold for charity. I think it's really um, one of your yeah, one of the images that stands out for me most in in your recent collection. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so I think I'll just end with one final image. Thank you so much for showing us that live. It's always very exciting to see see yes. sort of behind the scenes. Um, but my, my last question is just that I noticed when looking at your art that your earliest collection was from 2008 and 2009. Yeah. And we're, the art world is in so much turmoil right now and, you know, the world more generally, of course. And there's very likely going to be a big economic decline. And of course, after 2008, there was a huge economic crisis. And I wondered, you know, what were your experiences launching your, basically your artistic career at this time? And I wondered if you had any comments on, on, you know, what it might be like in the future and if any sort of budding artists are listening, what they might, what they might be able to expect. Because I think this is such an uncertain time for so many people. So I wondered what your, what your thoughts were on that. Yeah, well, actually, it's funny because during 2008, I lost everything. And um, I was making films before. And we had a lot of, uh, of the film money in the market and mm. basically lost everything. It was, it was a really hard time for me, but I had already shot this collection. So this was sort of my saving grace. And I said, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do. You know, you're yeah. at the bottom of the bottom. And maybe I was sort of holding on to that for a while. And so mm. I remember um, submitting it to galleries, right? And, and, and they said, what is this? You know, <laughs> is it a photograph? Is it a painting? So nobody accepted the artwork, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, and then I said, well, you know what? I'll just do my own show. And so I was in Los Angeles and they had the art walk and everybody told me, I mean, this was right in the middle. The crash had happened. It was right. terrible time. And everybody told me, you're crazy to do a show during this time. Nobody's going to buy art, right? I said, well, if I don't do it, like, you know, it's, it's a, it's like a rippling effect. Like I'm creating uh, money or income for the framers and the printers. Like if I don't keep going, then, mm. then what's going to happen? So I said, well, screw it. I'm going to do, I'm going to do the show. And I, we did this big show. I sold a ton of artwork to some big actors and in art walk, thousands of people came through, you know, and it was funny because after that, then the gallery started to pay more attention to me, like, oh, who is this girl, you know? And mm -hmm. I just did it all myself. And I didn't, it's funny, I didn't experience any of that because I just went for it. And I, I think that 
that's even what I'm doing right now. I, I'm not agreeing with that, you know? And mm -hmm. I think if everybody agrees with it, then you just become the effect of it. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I disagreed. And I always do disagree. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going to live a good life. I'm going to yeah. sell these pieces. I'm going to create art. And I'm not going to let anybody stop me from doing that. And I think that's the attitude for people as well. Like, no, keep doing your art, do your shows, yeah. find a way to get your artwork out there and don't agree with, with that. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Well, with those inspiring words, hopefully, yes. you know, other people will go out there and just, you know, display their art and hopefully keep the, you know, keep the wheels turning. Um, yeah. and become as successful as you've become because of course you've had a really excellent career and I'm sure it will continue for many many more decades I can't wait to see uh, what other collections you bring out in the future um, but with that yeah. thank you so much Christy uh, for joining me in this live it was really such a pleasure to talk to you hear your insights and and see some of your beautiful work so thank you very much thank you Isabel it was a pleasure and thank you all for being here it I, I hope to see you at some point and and it's so hard doing it on instagram and online but yeah it's a pleasure too thank you yeah all yeah. right thanks so okay. much thanks everyone okay. for watching bye bye, bye.